Hello, all. I want to make sure that you understand the concept of critical bands and uh, auditory filters before you go much further. It's one of the core principles in psychoacoustics, so it really needs to be understood. You understand the topic of filtering, no doubt, because you're all audio professionals. I want you to understand that in the cochlea, these filters are theoretical, mathematical. They're not physical filters although they have physical correlates. What I mean by that is that the behavior of frequencies in the cochlea can be described by using a bank of auditory filters. These filters overlap quite naturally, so it looks kind of like this. Here on the x-axis is frequency. Amplitude, as always, is on the y-axis, as always or usually. The filters overlap in such a way that the whole frequency spectrum of human hearing is covered. When we talk about consonance and dissonance, we're talking about whether or not two frequencies are so closely spaced that they occur within a single critical band or auditory filter. That might be the case, for example, with a minor second. Let's say you have uh, 440 hertz and A, and then whatever the frequency is for and a sharp, I'll say that it's 450 hertz, I think it's somewhere in that neighborhood. Anyway, a critical band around 400 hertz is gonna be about 100 hertz wide. That means that the two fundamental frequencies of an A and an A sharp are so closely separated that they will fall within one filter, which means that those two tones are going to interfere with each other. In contrast, let's take two other frequencies Let's take 220 hertz for an A and 330 hertz, let's say, for an E. Those two frequencies are far enough apart that they're going to activate two separate cochlear filters. Notice that I've used those ch terms interchangeably. I'm talking about auditory filters, cochlear filters. Depending on who you read, they may use either term. Uh, be sure to understand that those are the same thing.